joined by the president and first lady of the United States. Donald Trump attended the Washington Nationals' Game 5 loss to the Houston Astros. If you ever wanted to know what it'd sound like if Gary Bettman infiltrated a baseball game... Hello, Columbus! This was it. <laughs> Signage at all games, whether pro or negative, grabs our attention. None greater than this. A humongous banner flew in the upper deck over the railing, reading, not ironically, in an orange backdrop with white letters reading, Impeach Trump. Behind home plate, for the entire world to see, was a more glaring sign. In Nationals colors and George Springer at the dish, Veterans for Impeachment was held up behind home plate. Per the Washington Post, the men, Alan Pitts and Navid Shah, said they are Iraq veterans who are with Common Defense, an organization for veterans who are against the Trump administration. Trump has disrespected veterans often. He skipped the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I because of light rain. In an unusual decision, canceled his scheduled visit to an American World War I cemetery. It's incredible that a president would travel to France for this significant anniversary and then remain in his hotel room watching TV rather than pay in person his respects to the Americans who gave their lives in France for the victory gained a hundred years ago tomorrow, tweeted Bush's former speechwriter David Frum. He skipped a U.S. cemetery visit where the French army trolled him on Twitter. He blew off Veterans Day altogether, canceling another pre-scheduled visit, this time to Arlington Cemetery, a mere 12-minute drive from the White House. Trump has attacked not one, not two, but three Gold Star families. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. and a half years. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. He attacked the late John McCain. He lied about his charitable contributions claiming philanthropy of millions of dollars to a nonprofit helping veterans' as families when Washington Post reported less than $10,000 over seven years. He defamed Admiral William McRaven, the architect of the daring special forces raid into Pakistan that killed Al-Qaeda chief Osama bin Laden in 2011, acting on CIA intelligence, accusing McRaven of being a Clinton backer and in the camp of former President Barack Obama, which the GOP's official Twitter account backed and endorsed. He has not visited troops in a war zone, something his predecessors have done often. He lied about wanting to serve. He lied about being on the front lines. He deferred from the draft five times because he was a trust fund baby. This isn't rocket science, it's connecting the dots. Doctor's notes for discounted rates on apartments. The president even takes military funds to pay for a racist border wall. This is the commander in chief. So when a banner is flown, it is symbolic and reactive of the well-founded criticisms of a man who lies, disdains, and disrespects the troops the veterans that served, and those who have fallen. He claims to respect the national anthem. He showed up afterward yesterday. He claims to love the flag. He gropes it at every turn. A sickening president, a broken relationship caused by his own actions, and the result of going into a venue that is not vetted by his administration to be pro-authoritarian. The result? Disrespect, only with which he brought upon himself.